What is up everybody? Today we are going to do this with 3JS. So as we can see, we have this uh, just very simple photographs here, nothing all that exciting. Um, we also have this cool sort of uh, animation that is occurring on hover. Um, it's not as straightforward as it looks because this is all entirely achieved within 3JS. We have this uh, smooth scroll. Um, we have this hover here and the way you do things like this in 3JS is not like you would normally with just HTML, CSS and regular JavaScript. Um, so this is going to sort of set us up in the future in, in, uh, in order to do really cool stuff, especially with shaders. Um, but that's a different su subject. So there's a lot to, to, to digest here. Um, so definitely, if you enjoy this, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Wait one second though, you're about to watch me work with 3JS, which is a part of front end web development. Now, if you're not a great front end developer, you should definitely check out the front end developer career path at scrimba.com. They recently launched their front end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. All right, so the very first thing, I'm gonna be in uh, Visual Studio Code here. I'm gonna get the terminal out and control, uh, <laughs> no, not escape, control tilde, there we go. And I'm gonna go into my code folder, and we wanna go to the GitHub starter. Um, so let me go to github.com real quickly. Find, uh, there it is. All right, so we want that. That's gonna be linked in the YouTube description. So just go there. Um, we're gonna copy this URL right here. Close that out. We're gonna type git clone, right click. And we'll call this, um, I, I, I don't know, uh, three hover. There we go. So we're gonna CD into three hover and we will npm i to install everything from the dependencies and then we will run i uh, let's see here npm run dev and this will open up a browser with the default starter right here which is just that torus and then we will open the folder and we will go to three hover and select it all right, and there we go. So, um, by the way, this whole setup right here, all of this, that's what's necessary to create, you know, just this very basic scene. And I, if you're new to this, I highly suggest checking out the description here of this video to access the playlist um, that's associated with this video. Watch the first video because I explain everything that's happening here. I'm not gonna waste my time doing that because I already did it. So watch the first video. There's a second video after this as well. I would, I would recommend watching that too. Um, and then you can get to this video where we bump things up a notch in terms of what we're doing. Um, all right, so the first thing I wanna tackle uh, is getting the actual photographs onto the canvas first. So what we'll, I'll, I'll do is um, I'm gonna open, and I'm gonna click this up uh, in Reveal Explorer. So right click, and we're gonna go into um, Source here. Now I already have, no, we're not gonna go to Source, we're gonna go to Static. I already have a series of uh, photographs that I want to use. Um, so they're all right here, and they're in a Photographs folder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that paste this here, and these are just photographs of buildings. <laughs> that's, a, that's all they are right here. And these are from unsplash.com. Um, so go ahead and get your own images if you want, no big deal. Um, I'll see, I try to remember to add this to uh, GitHub as its own project. And then you can follow along with the same images if you want. All right, so we have those images here in photographs labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, and you'll see why that comes into play here in a second. Um, and so what we need to do first is we need to get, uh, our, let's just remember to get our texture loader. So um, texture loader, we're gonna get this up and running. So we're gonna create a constant of texture loader equals new three and texture loader. All right, so what that will allow us to do is to get these loaded up um, basically uh, in the next part of the code. Um, and first, let's also get rid of this uh, object. We don't need 
this object. We don't even need this material. You know what? We we just we don't even need this. <laughs> All right. So if we save now, uh, we're gonna get an error because down here we're rotating a sphere that doesn't exist anymore. So now if we save this, let's. Oh, it's not working. Let's go back to our terminal and npm run dev. Okay. So this time it it should work. It'll just be black. There won't be any type of circle. Control shift I, make sure there's no errors either in your console. All right, so what I wanna do is, um, we could with our texture loader just, you know, get all four of those images loaded up. But we can do this uh, in a little bit more of an efficient manner. If, let's just come up right here near the objects, um, we put it in a loop of some sort. So that's what I'm going to do. So. Um, what we'll do is we know we have four different pictures. So what we'll say is for I, uh, no, let I equals zero. And then I is going to be less than uh, four here. So that'll give us zero, one, two, three. And then I plus plus. And then inside of this, what we wanna do, let's come out here, is create uh, a geometry that we're gonna use for each of the four images. Um, so what we can create is const geometry equals new three, and then we're just gonna do a plane buffer, or a plane buffer geometry as it's called. All right, and so we're gonna put just, uh, this is basically, it accepts multiple parameters. In fact, it would be a good idea if we get this up and we go to plane buffer geometry and just, you know, check out the various, uh, based on the constructor, the various properties. So we have the width and the height, and then the width segments and the height segments. And so these we don't have to really worry about um, for this particular project. Although if we were trying to do cool things with shaders and vertex shaders, like making a wave and stuff, we would wanna bump these up because um, the default is one, we would want more. Uh, but the width and height, <coughs> excuse me, we do want to adjust. So um, by default, they're just one by one, uh, so which is gonna give us a square. In fact, yeah, let's just do this for now. Um, and then we're gonna put one in 1 1.3 for the height, so that'll give us kind of like a this type of aspect ratio, more of a rectangle. All right, so now what we'll do, we have to have a material. Now, if you recall, if you watch the other videos, the my other two videos, um, every object that you see in 3JS is composed of basically two different things. We have the object and then we have the material. Um, the object is like the skeleton and the material is the skin. So we already have the object here or the geometry, um, which is the skeleton, but now we need to put something onto it, all right? So this is how we're gonna tackle this part. So we're gonna create a const of material equals new three mesh basic material, all right? So there's a, bu a bunch of different types of uh, materials that you can use in 3JS. They all do different things. Uh, mesh basic material is just fine for what we need. We're just trying to display an image. So we're gonna open this up and inside of here, we're going to map and map is the property that you would use within this object uh, that allows you to put a texture, like a picture, onto the geometry. So we're gonna do map, texture loader. Remember we created that up there higher. Uh, we're going to load, and inside of it, we're gonna use, by the way, these back ticks because that allow us to also put in um, a template literal, I believe it's called, uh, basically a variable within a string. And so we're gonna put forward slash photographs so we don't put static, it's just straight in photographs. It knows already, Webpack already knows to look in here. Uh, photographs forward slash, this is where we put in our I, all right? So our, it, the first one will be zero, and then the next one will be one, two, and then three. And then we also have to put the .jpg because they're all JPEG files, all right? So at this point, nothing's happening because once you have those two things, the skeleton and the flesh, so to speak, you have to create a mesh. And the mesh is just tying those things, two things together. And then once we create the mesh, we add it to the scene. So what we'll do is create, uh, we'll just call this const image, and this is new3.mesh. And it just takes two parameters, 
which is the first the geometry, which is defined outside of this for loop. And the reason we do it outside of this for loop is because the geometry is exactly the same for all four of them. So geometry, and then material right here. I don't know why I added a second. All right, all right so um, now at this point, like I said, we did the three things. We got our geometry, we got our uh, material, we have our mesh, and now the last thing is to cont, no, oops, it's to scene, add the image right here. All right, so let's save this and just see what happens here. All right, so it looks kind of strange because we only see one, but they're all just sitting right on top of each other. Um, so we need a way to offset this so that we can move them around uh, or, or see them, you know, maybe stacked vertically, or if you want to do a horizontal scroller, you could do that as well. Um, so what we can do is we can take this image, oops, image position, and we set the X and Y values here. So um, the first thing we'll do, um, let's put one here, and then for the Y value, we're gonna take our I, we're going to multiply it by 1.8. So now you can see something's happening here, but we can't we can't scroll, we can't access the other ones, which is frustrating, right? So what we can do real quickly is dat.gui. So we're not using this currently, but we are going to in a second, and this will allow us to easily debug situations and just create. Uh, a user interface, thus GUI, um, or a GUI, um, that allow us just to, to, to mess with the variables um, and the properties. So what we can do, um, we wanna move the camera just so we can see all four of those images. Um, so to do that, let's find, um, let's go down, let's just put it here, we have to move it. Uh, we're gonna do it, GUI.add. Um, actually, let's come after, wherever the camera's at, where's the camera, there we go. We'll come down here. So gui.add, um, we're going to be putting camera.position, and then in the second parameter, we put in string, which is kind of strange, we just put um, the x, y, or z. So we'll put x here, and if we save this, you'll see that we have up here, in this little control area, the x uh, position. and of course, if, if you move this up and down, this is gonna be crazy. So we don't want the X really, we just want the Y. And then also to give us an actual slider, we have to put a min. So we could put, um, let me find where I, I put mine. Yeah, it was just a negative five, because you can go negative on the camera position. So negative five, and then also a max of just five. Uh, actually, just do a max of 10. And let's look at that. So now we have this little uh, container. Let me make this a little bit larger here. And so now we can see all four. So if you'll notice if we refresh to get back to zero here, um, these are all going up. They're going they're going the wrong way. I want them to, to be down. Uh, like I want the first one, and then the second one will come. You know, from there. So what we can do is just take this and put minus right here. So now they're all gonna go down and we start here and then we just code, we'll go down. Now what if we wanted some variation on the Y position? Uh, we can definitely do that as well. So by default we have this at one. If we put this back to zero, you'll see um, it's going straight in, in the center. I kinda wanna have text over here. Um, so what we're gonna do is, let's do a math random, all right? So our math random, if we just put math, oops, math.random, this is gonna go from a zero to one. And so naturally, it's just kind of over here to the right already, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna put, I want it to go a little bit er, over further, so plus 0.3. And now, they're a little bit over here to the further, although there's not a huge difference. So now every time we refresh this, these will be in slightly different positions all right, very cool. All right, um, after that, what we want to do is uh, figure out how we can make this scroll down with our mouse wheel, all right? Um, 
right now, if we use the mouse roll, we can't we can't traverse, we can't go over these uh, and see all these items. So to do this, um, we're going to tie into the the wheel event, uh, which is vanilla JavaScript stuff, nothing huge, nothing you have to worry about. Um, let's put that right here. Just call this mouse, and we're going to window to add event listener. And it's going to be on the wheel event. So every time you use that wheel, this is going to fire. And then we'll call a um, a function called on mouse wheel. So we're going to create um, a couple properties. Y equals zero. Let position equals zero as well. And then inside of here, we're going to have our function on mouse wheel. We're going to pass in the event. And the event is going to give us a delta y property. So um, if we console log delta y, oh, sorry, event dot delta y, we're going to get our console out here. There we go. So this is giving us a bunch of stuff here. So what we want to do is we want to tie our y, which is currently at default at zero. Which is defined above equals event dot delta y, and we're going to, you know what? For now, we're just going to leave it there. We're going to make an adjustment in uh, a little bit, but what now? Once we have this this y position, what we'll do is we're going to come down here in our tick function. Now, again, I'm not going to go over and explain everything that's happening. I already did that in the first video, so definitely watch that. Um, but basically, this is running rapidly uh, very quickly because of this right here the, the request animation frame so when we do you know a lot of 3js uh, animations and stuff or tying stuff into it the mouse we'll do it over here in this tick function um, and so what we'll do is our camera and we want to adjust the camera position on the y-axis all right based on this mouse wheel so camera dot position dot y equals Let's just put in for now. This is not. It's going to be messed up. It's not what we want. Um, why? And that's defined up above already. Let's see what happens here. I'm not even sure what is going to happen exactly. Okay, so it's going way too fast. So once you even just touch this, it, just barely at all, it's just going away way too fast. So what we want to do over here is multiply this by a um, a really tiny number. So for us, that's going to be something like times 0 0.0007 so now it is it's not really hardly even moving at all for some reason it's just getting stuck what we want to do is now um, we're gonna take our position remember we create a let position equals zero and we're going to put let's see here right above it a position is plus equals y. So it's going to basically compound itself and keep adding to itself. Um, and then let's tie this here to the position. All right, so now we have something that's happening, but it just keeps on going up and up and up and it won't stop. So the way we get that to stop. I and come to like a, a gradual, um, you know, just stop essentially. Is we take our y, and remember this is updating, you know, like 60 times, 60 frames per second. We multiply it by a number smaller than one, and that's going to, I uh, sorry, it's it's multiply equal, so it's going to multiply itself by a factor of like let's do 0.9. Um, and what that will do, as this is updating and this whole tick function keeps running, it's going to decrease this value gradually. And the position will be adding to itself a smaller number each time, which will affect the camera position Y. So it will make it go slower. So let's save that. And look at that. Now we have that nice, real smooth sort of scroll that's happening that you see in a lot of these fancy 3JS websites. And that's how you do it. Uh, very, 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 very cool. Now you can affect 
the speed of things by playing with these numbers. Like if we try 0.5, what does that do? It, it makes it a lot quicker. So 0.9, I like it. I think that's a good value. You can also play with this up here as well. Like if you try putting in point like three right there, what does that do? It's really fast. So you can make it a lot slower than what we had by you know lowering this number or whatever you want. But I think these are good values that I like that are pretty pretty solid. Now there's also a way, but I'm not going to do it uh, to clamp um, the position Y so that once it gets to like maybe this is like Y five or whatever. Um, and then maybe like minus or, or like zero or whatever, it'll stop scrolling at a certain point, but I'm not gonna mess with that at, uh, right now. So what we'll do now um, is, now that we have this, how do we get this so that we can hover over one of these images and do something with it? Well, that's ray casting, all right? So maybe you've heard of it uh, in different 3D terminology or in gaming or whatever but it's called ray casting. It's just basically a fancy name to detect if um, something is interacting with uh, an object in your scene, all right? That, that's, that's basically how you do it. Um, this, this object that's interacting with something could be the mouse. It doesn't have to be the mouse. It could be something else uh, in, the, in, the, in the scene, but this right here, we want it to be the mouse. Kind of like you know an ad event listener of mouse enter in vanilla JavaScript, we we don't that that's not how you do it in in uh, 3JS. We have to do it a different way, and unfortunately, it's a little bit more involved. But it once you get the the, the basic boiler boilerplate code down and the, the the concept, you understand it. It's not a big deal. So first, we have to create a ray caster in 3JS. So um, let's go ahead. And I'll just put put that right here. So we're going to create a const ray caster equals new three dot ray caster like that um so what we want to do is we first have to get all of the uh, objects in our scene which there's four of them actually technically there's six if you count the camera and the lights but we have four basically meshes and we want to get all of those um Again, you know, if we created all these outside of a for loop and just did them, you know, individually one by one, it would be a little bit easier. But because we're we're doing things, you know, dynamically, like when the, in this for loop, we're going to do something that's going to quickly allow us to get access to all of the objects in the scene. So the way we do that is we're going to first create an array of obs, obs. <laughs> uh, so an empty array. And then what we do is we take the scene and we traverse, all right? And we pass in uh, an object here. And inside of here, we're gonna say, if object is mesh, all right? Mesh, again, remember, mesh is just, think of it just, you know, the photograph is the mesh, then there's another one, so there's four meshes. So if it is a mesh, then we say objects obgs dot push object that the, the object that it finds. So it will fill this array with all the objects. And of course, you know we can console log this real quick um, uh, object, and it should give us four different things here. So you can see mesh, 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 mesh. So that's all four of them. All right, so that's just a quick way to find what's happening here. So let's go back to that code. So now we have our objects. So now in our tick function, we come down here and let's just do raycaster right here. And we're gonna put, uh, first we're gonna do raycaster set from camera. I uh, We also, oh, I forgot. Another very important thing. Um, remember, I said the whatever is intersecting, uh, like whatever it is you want to intersect with the object, you have to get that first. In our case, it's the mouse, so we have to to do the mouse code real quick. That goes in the first, and then we're going to put camera in the second uh, parameter there. So for our mouse, let's uh, create 
um, right here. All right, so we already have our mouse uh, right there. So what we want to do is create a const of mouse equals new three vector two. All right, so there's a vector two and there's a vector three. In our case, we're just saying we want to store an X and Y value. That's all it is. So we're going to create a window add event listener. And this is going to be on mouse move. Um, and then we're going to pass in an event. All right, and so inside of here, this is we need to get the mouse X and Y. And the reason for that is because we need to know, we need to tell 3GS where this mouse is so that it knows whether or not we're interacting or hovering over one of the meshes that are on the scene based on that OBGS <laughs> object. So we're going to put array rather. So we're going to put in here um, mouse.x equals event.clientx. And we're going to divide that by the sizes.width. Now, the sizes.width, we didn't go over it. Um, I did it in the first video, though. Um, basically, it's the width of the browser. So if I do a search here real quickly. Yeah, the sizes.width equals the window inner width. All right, so think of it as that. So we're dividing it by that. And then we're multiplying it by 2 minus 1. Now, you're probably wondering, why are you doing that? This came from directly from Bruno Simon's uh, course uh, where I'm, I'm basically getting this whole recaster code. Um, what this does is it does a few things. So for instance, if we just take this real quickly, let's comment this out, or we don't even need to comment it out. What we can do is console log uh, the event.client uh, x the, alone. So if we do this, you see if we go to the very left, we're at you know zero, and because this is the x, we're talking about the horizontal axis, and the y, it's all the way up here. So we don't want values that are going all the way from zero to you know whatever the width of the browser is. I what we're going to do is first we'll divide that by the sizes dot width, and what that will end up doing is that gives us a decimal a decimal point that goes from 0.0, .0 to you know 1 essentially um, and in order i forget what the justification was but this next bit right here will take that value and give us a negative value all the way from negative 1 to positive 1 at this end so that's what that's doing essentially i wanted to run through that so you can understand so we do the same thing with y. So shift alt down just to replicate that line. Y right here is y. And this is going to be sizes.height. And the same thing is happening here, except there is one change. We're going to wrap this in parentheses. And we're going to put minus to invert the value, because the way the y axis works um, in the values you get from uh, JavaScript, it, it's re, it, it, it's reversing um, what you want for this uh, effect to work. So we just put uh, a negative there. So nothing's going to change here, of course. Um, but now we have these mouse.x and mouse.y that we can use. So remember, now we're passing in the mouse right here from the Raycaster. So this is kind of like that boilerplate code that you just kind of need, no matter what, um, for this Raycaster hover-based thing to work. And then we have to create uh, a constant called intersects, although you can name it whatever you want, of course. Raycaster equals intersects objects. And then we pass in the objects that we defined above. So this is this value right here is gonna it's gonna let us know when the raycaster, when our mouse essentially is hovering over these objects. So now that we have that we can do a for const intersect of intersects all right because this is this becomes i an array so if we console log intersects let me see what happens so let's come out here oops did i 
intersect objects. Oh, I put intersects. It's intersect. Sorry about that. All right. So now if I hover over, it lets us know. It's kind of hard to see because you see all these other things. Uh, you'll see that briefly. It's letting us know when this uh, intersects in and out. All right. So what we'll do is we I uh, can put in certain things. So console log um, intersected. So let's try that. So as we're hovering over it, you can see it's bumping it up quite a bit. And it's gonna do this for all of them. So it's going, it's just it just gives you a time value essentially of how long this is hovering over and then when it stops. All right, so outside of here, we can also create the inverse of that as well. So what we can do is const i for const object of obgs, and we can say if intersects dot find intersect. This is a little bit verbose. I mean, it's not verbose, but it's a little bit complex. Um, intersect dot object. Although this is just basic vanilla JavaScript stuff equals object. Um, we can what what happens here is it is a uh, console log. Let's see what happens here. We're just going to put a test to see what exactly this does. So you can see it's running continually continuously. Here, let's refresh this. All right, so test. So it stops when, so it's basically the inverse of what was happening before. Um, and that's what's gonna allow us to kind of revert back to um, a an initial state, so to speak. So what we could do here is um, we, we now have access to each of these objects. So what we can do is say um, intersect dot object. Let's do position. Um, let's just take dot x uh, for just moving it over. Um, let's just set this to like three. Um, by default, it's gonna have them all pushed over to three. So in order to make this work, we have to put right here our object dot position dot x equals i uh, i think it's one by default but whatever it is it's 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 going to push it back to where it is now if we hover <laughs> i thought that would work what the f okay it was not working the way i thought it would um and that's because there is one error right up here this needs to be a plus all right so now if we go back we'll see we have this effect and that's because i'm hovering and it's posi it's moving the position back and forth so that's a bad example um, what we could do instead, let's put like a scale dot set, and then we could set the x and y um, like at 1.1, 1.1, and then we can do the same thing over here. Scale dot set. Oops, what am I doing? Scale dot set uh, one and one. So now it should. And it's not going to grow. It's not going to animate, but it's going to bounce up. like that. All right, um, another thing that I did change, um, I changed this right here. The, I, I didn't have this recorded. I put a minus here to reverse the scroll direction based on the scroll wheel. Um, so make sure you do that as well. All right, so if we wanted um, some, some cool animations, we can use GSAP or uh, Greenstock Animation Platform. And so what we'll do is install that. And it, it, for those of you who don't know what it is, I, I have like a ton of videos on GSAP. Uh, it's just a, a JavaScript animation library that can work with 3JS. So if we go to um, our terminal, let's create a new one. We're gonna um, npm i GSAP. All right, so that's ready. Um, we have to import it at the top, and so that import code is, let's see here, import GSAP from GSAP. We're gonna come back down. And so now inside of, inside of here, we can say GSAP, and we'll use the to method. Um, and so that's gonna look like this. So GSAP to, if 
first parameter is your target. Um, so we'll specify intersect dot object dot scale, and then we put in an object in the next parameter, um, and we want to scale the x. Let's say 1.7 and the y to 1.7. Um, and then we're going to go over here and we're going to specify gsap2 uh, object.scale. Um, oops, there we go. And then we're going to put x just 1 and x 1. So when we say x 1 and 1, you're thinking, well, isn't that going to change it to a square? No, it's just based on uh, what it was originally set at, if that makes sense. Um, so if we go back. Now we can see something very strange happening here. This isn't what I want. <laughs> oh, that's why. Why am I doing X and X? There we go. X and Y, there we go. All right, so that's kind of cool. Now let's do something else. Let's also uh, change it um, in terms of uh, the rotation. So rotation, this is a cool sort of thing. We're just gonna put the Y and we're gonna put the value of uh, negative 0.5. Oh, and let's also do that here. So rotation and the y will be zero. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's also change the uh, the depth of position. So object of position, and we'll change the z to negative 0 0.9. Now, I I played around with these values a lot. And in fact, it would be a good idea to use the, that dat.gui uh, to help you figure out those values faster based on what you want. So we could put position here, um, z0. All right, so now, now it kind of like pushes them back and away from each other so they're not inter intersecting each other. And that those are the values that I found worked quite well. Now, what's really cool, and what we will do in the future, is you know the, there's so much more you can do with 3JS. In fact, this example here is kind of silly, just because this could all be done for the most part uh, with just regular HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, but we'll get into shaders, which are an entirely different new subject. Uh, that I've never taught before. So I have to become more confident before I get into shaders because we can do things like when this is hover over, we could have some really cool sort of uh, effects that occur on the image. We can make it you know, wave, you can make flags, you can make it move or just subtly change. There's so much cool stuff that I'm excited, but I wanted to at least cover, this is already a long video, I wanted to at least cover some of these basic concepts that we're gonna be reusing in future tutorials. Um, so. Um, for the fun of it, uh, let's go ahead and put that um, that simple headline. So we'll go to index.html um, and we're going to specify a div class of content, h1, and we'll say the city of excellence, some random city. And then we're going to go to our CSS and we're going to specify, you know what, I like uh, font family. Let's use Playfair display. I already have it installed. You would need to obviously import this normally. Color white. And I'm just going to, because this is already a long video, copy and paste these two values. So this is just our content, making it a position absolute so it will sit on top of the WebGL canvas. Um, display grid, align item center, which is just this H1 inside of it. And then we're just, you know, doing something simple. And there we go. Let me reset this to the actual size. There we go. Very, very, very cool stuff. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. That's really gonna set us up in the future here to start getting into really cool stuff like with shaders and all that. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you soon, goodbye.